wonderful people, you know the story of how Robert Watson Watt developed British radar after trying to make a Tesla death ray work. That raises so many big questions that I wanted to answer for you. What exactly is a death ray? How did it work? Why is Nikola Tesla not giving the death ray idea to the United States? Why is Tesla in Britain selling the death ray idea to the British government and what did they think about it? Well, some of those answers are actually really hard to find, but an amazing organisation called The Black Vault under Freedom of Information have found a lot of the FBI papers about Nikola Tesla's death ray and, interestingly, its connection with Great Britain. So let's look together at these original documents and try and work out what is a death ray, why the USA didn't use it, how it came to Britain, what Britain did with it, and probably the most intriguing question, did the death ray go away or was it further developed when the technology got better? This timeline begins on the day Nikola Tesla died. His body was found in his hotel bedroom and left a $400 unpaid hotel bill. And straight away, this story has a strange twist. Donald Trump's uncle, Dr. John Trump of MIT, was asked to accompany Tesla's Serbian relatives to his hotel suite to retrieve Tesla's papers and plans. But they were in the safe, which was booby-trapped. Here's Dr. Trump's account of how he retrieved the death ray plans. Tesla had warned the management that the device was a secret weapon and it would detonate if opened by unauthorized persons. Upon opening the vault and indicating the package containing the secret weapon, the hotel manager and employees promptly left the scene. The federal agents who had come along also pulled back, the better to give him the sole distinction of opening the parcel. It was wrapped in brown paper and tied with a string. He remember hesitating, thinking how beautiful the weather was outdoors and pondering on why he was not outside too. He lifted the parcel onto the table and mustering his courage, snipped the string with his pocket knife. He removed the wrapping. Inside was a handsome, polished wooden chest bound with brass. It required a final effort of courage to raise the hinged lid. Inside stood a multi-decade resistance box of the type used for Wheatstone Bridge resistance measurements. Maybe Tesla's booby trap device actually worked because the papers in the safe actually became muddled and divided between the Serbian relatives and the federal agents. Later on, it was claimed that the relatives were working for the Soviet Union. So do we know that all the documents were kept by the FBI? No. It's even possible that Tesla never committed the death ray plans to paper. Tesla claims he had a photographic memory and never had written down the exact plans of the death ray. But before his death, he explained the principle of what it could do to a journalist. The New York Times carried an article setting forth Nikola Tesla's plans for a death ray. He was ready to divulge to the United States government 
the secret of his teleforce, with which he said an aeroplane motor could be stopped at a distance of 250 miles so that an invisible Chinese wall of defense could be built around the country against any attempted attack by an enemy air force, no matter how large. According to Tesla, this teleforce was based on an entirely new principle of physics that no one had ever dreamed about and was different from the principle embodied in his inventions relating to the transmission of electrical power from a distance. Tesla stated that this new type of force would operate through a beam 100 millionth of a square centimeter in diameter and could be generated from a special plant that could cost no more than two million dollars and would take only about three months to construct. Tesla stated that a dozen such plants located at strategic points along the coast, according to Tesla, would be enough to defend the United States against all possible aerial attacks. So was the United States in the 1930s actually interested in building Tesla's defensive shield? With the United States getting ready to spend millions of dollars for national defense, Mr. Tesla's great reputation as an inventor, who always was many years ahead of his time, should be given careful consideration. Mr. Lawrence stated in his opinion the United States government should take Mr. Tesla at his word and commission him to go ahead with the construction of his Teleforce plant. So it seems there was some interest. Tesla even had a financial deal with a private defence contractor. An agreement dated April 20th, 1935, between Nikola Tesla and the Amtorg Trading Corporation, in which Tesla agreed to supply plans, specifications, and complete information on a method and apparatus for producing high voltages of up to 50 million volts for producing very small particles in a tube open to air. Stop, this is actually me in the future. I was just about to publish this story to you on YouTube when one of my patrons who get to see my films before you and make comments and help with research pointed out something very interesting. This Amtorg Trading Corporation is actually a Russian-American company. It was the way that America did business with Russia in the 1930s. Now, you have to put this into historical context. At the time, Russia was actually an ally. It wasn't the communist threat, 1939. So it was fine to do business with Russia. I think they were always kept at arm's length, but through this company, Nikola Tesla came to a very reasonable business deal, which might explain how later on in this film, you'll see that Russia ended up with their version of Tesla's death ray. On with the story. The receipt of $25,000 fee for this disclosure was acknowledged in the agreement which was signed by Nikola Tesla and by A. Bartonane of the M. Torg Trading Corporation. The method referred to in this agreement is apparently that described in Exhibit F. Exhibit F. New Art of Projecting Concentrated Non-Dispersive Energy Through Natural Media. This updated document by Tesla describes an electrostatic method of producing very high voltages and capable of very great power. This generator is used to accelerate charged particles, presumably electrons, such a beam of high energy electrons passing through the air is the concentrated non-dispersive means by which energy is transmitted through natural media. As a component of this apparatus, there is described an open-ended vacuum tube within which the electrons are first accelerated. In the end, the US weren't interested and spent their money elsewhere. 
Nikola Tesla, no doubt a bit peed off, decided to sell the death ray to England. This exhibit consists of a series of letters to representatives of the British government. It includes a reply dated the 7th of January 1938 from the British government. These letters offer to the British government for a fee the disclosure of a means of accelerating to high energies minute particles. Such beams would constitute a death ray capable of the protection of Great Britain from air attack. In the late 1930s, the United Kingdom had Chamberlain as their Prime Minister. He wanted peace in his time and classically tried to do a deal with Hitler. So he was not the ideal person to sell a death ray to. But he did invite Nikola Tesla over to London to explain the system. Tesla no doubt explained to the Brits how it worked in principle and came up with a fantastically high price. Tesla revealed that he had carried on negotiations with Prime Minister Chamberlain for the sale of his ray system to Great Britain for $30 million on the basis of his presentation that the device would provide complete protection for the British Isles against any enemy approaching from sea or air. Anecdotal evidence says that Tesla's hotel room in London was burgled, possibly MI whatever, looking for the plans of the death ray. Who knows? There was no financial deal. Tesla went away empty-handed. But Britain decided to build the death ray. Tesla was greatly disappointed by the collapse of his negotiations with the British government. With it there collapsed his hopes of providing a demonstration of his most recent and what he considered his most important discoveries. He did not, however, dwell on the subject. Beyond the single conversation, he did not mention the matter again. He did not get another chance to finance the demonstration of these discoveries. I don't think they knew how it fully worked, and certainly they didn't have step-by-step instructions. So the war office, as it was called at the time, hired the best man to figure it out, Robert Watson Watt, a radio engineer. He was tasked to actually build the death ray. But maybe it wasn't the first... There was a British inventor who also had designed a death ray. He was a bit of a showman and he even projected a clock into the clouds above London, a bit like a bat signal. But Robert Watson Watt tried hard to make it work and failed. Reporting back to the War Office, he said it would use way too much power And it doesn't really work. But while testing his ideas, he found that a beam of radio frequency bounced back off an aeroplane over Daventry. And possibly that effect might be useful for detecting incoming bombers. So Watson Watt was diverted to build radar. At this point, that's the end of the death ray. But maybe not. Department of Defence, Research and Engineering. Subject, papers recovered on the death of Nikola Tesla. We understand that the FBI may have possession of a number of papers found after the death of Nikola Tesla in 1943... Nikola Tesla was a brilliant electrical engineer, i.e. the Tesla coil, whom was a pioneer in various aspects of electrical transmission phenomenon. Alan McLaren, Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Air Force. Digging into these FBI papers, you can see 
that the U.S. Air Force still had an interest at the Wright Patterson Air Force Base in two projected weapons. Director FBI from SAC, Cincinnati. Research physicists with the Electro-Optical Research Lab of the Avionics Division of the U.S. Air Force Aeronautical Systems Division at Wright Patterson Air Force Base WPAFB and physicist and intelligence specialist on particle beam weapon technology with the Foreign Technologies Division. You can also see fears that the Russians had a similar system, if not the whole of the Tesla system, actually working. Also, the Soviet Union has allegedly had access to some of Tesla's papers, possibly in Belgrade and or elsewhere, which influenced their early research into directed energy weapons. And Butler feels access to much of Tesla's papers on lightning, beam weapons and or death rays would give him more insight into the Soviet beam weapons program. This is Butler's area of expertise and responsibility. He has been unable to locate any Tesla papers or copies of some of the classified or unclassified libraries at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. However, there are reports that some portions of them were shipped by the custodian of Alien Property Office in Washington, D.C. to a technical research lab at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Possibly the equipment lab, now closed for some years or reorganized into another organization. Well, they certainly tried. This is a mock up by McDonnell Douglas of a neutral beam death ray. It was going to be part of Ronald Reagan's SDI or Star Wars program. And I think there's good evidence out there that Britain continued to work on its own death ray at Bordsey Manor, the radar establishment in Suffolk, probably sharing the facilities at Orford Ness, getting its power from Sizewell, a nuclear power station, and some of the technology from a laboratory in Martlesham Heath, Suffolk. How that all adds up in geography is very interesting. I'll just say one word. Rendlesham. Interesting stuff, I'm sure you will agree. But it raises some big questions that I don't know all the answers to. Do you think there's a connection between the Tesla death ray and the development of the high power microwave magnetron in Britain? And what about that intriguing Soviet stuff about scalar weapons and domes of protection? That sounds like it's connected to the Tesla death ray. So you can see, I've opened a can of worms for you. A directed energy weapon, DEW, is a ranged weapon that damages its target with highly focused energy. Operational advantages. Directed energy weapons can be used discreetly. Energy weapons are unaffected by gravity. These weapons potentially eliminate many logistical problems in terms of ammunition supply. Plasma weapons fire a beam or stream of plasma, which is an excited state of matter. There's much more to say on this subject, so subscribe and stay tuned for Britain's Death Ray Part 2. 